Hey everyone, good afternoon. Uh, this is Evan Lazarus, I'm CEO of T3 Live, and today we are hopefully going to put on a very special presentation. I have two of my uh, very good friends and colleagues, Mr. Michael Lee and Mr. Steve LeVay, that are going to share with you some of their experiences and stories and, and strategies about why they love trading <clears throat> in the first two hours of the day. And for those that are familiar with T3 Live uh, and the Trade the Morning Strategy Course or Trade the Morning Mentoring Program, this is a glimpse into uh, both Mike and Steve's world and, and, and how they've achieved success uh, and continue to trade uh, this market day in and day out. So before we begin, I'm going to tell you a little bit about both Mike and Steve. Um, here's our disclosures. And First, uh, Steve, again, Steve and Mike both manage uh, and, and the Trade the Morning Mentoring Room, uh, and they are both co-authors of the Trade the Morning Strategy course. Uh, <clears throat> Steve has been a professional trader for 13 years, uh, although he looks like he's been doing it for a lot longer than that. Um, <laughs> and Steve is, is an associated member of T3 Trading Group, uh, which is a registered broker-dealer. Um, really a pretty remarkable statistic. Next we have Mr. Michael Lee. Uh, Mike is a near and dear friend to me, and Mike is also a co-mentor of the Trade the Morning Strategy Room. Mike's been, Mike's been a professional trader for 14 years, again, co-author of the Strategy Course, and additionally, Mike is also a registered member of T3 Trading Group, which is where he does his trading. <clears throat> uh, I want to mention before we jump into the content I hand it over to these guys to uh, talk about um, you know what it is they do and how they do it and why they're so good at it I do want to mention that that there will be a special offer um, for those attending the webinar uh, so I want to I want to implore you stick around for the end um, you know because it really is something I think that you're, you're hoping you're going to want to take advantage of listening to these two and, and you know share their enthusiasm and their passion for what they do. So make sure you stick around. There is a special offer that I don't think you're going to want to pass up. So I'm going to hand it over to both Mike and Steve who are going to uh, give you their goods. All right. Thanks, Ev. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Trade the Morning webinar with Mike and I. I'm very excited to bring this webinar to you guys. Let's talk about what Trade the Morning is, and basically, it's exactly what it says. It is a process of trading basically from 9.30 to 11.30, and getting the bulk of your trading done in those hours where we see the most volatility, the most institutional order flow, and what we consider to have the best advantage in the market because... Uh, as a lot of professional traders know, when the afternoon happens, we get a lot of uh, black boxes, computerized trading, but in the morning, the boxes don't work as well because there's so much uh, volume going off and, like I said, human trading because there's institutional order flow. Uh, we used to be labeled the momentum trading, but that really didn't captivate what we did as a whole because the way, the way we found out that trade in the morning was the best for us was going over our trades uh, you know, every day, every month, and understanding where we made the most money. And if I looked over my report cards, I saw that I made 80% of my day between the hours of 9.30, 11.30, and I found that I churned a lot or you know, wrote a lot of, of – uh, or traded a lot of shares but didn't really generate much P&L over the afternoon session. So we decided to brand it, trade the morning, you know, and in, you know, basically get through our day at 12 o'clock. I mean, there are times that I'll sit in front of my desk all day, but my the bulk of my day is done between those hours. I don't know if Mike has anything he wants to add here. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to thank T3 for allowing us to talk about trading the morning because it is something that I have been doing since I have started trading, okay? When I look at my numbers, when I look at the stocks I'm picking, my strengths, I focus on trading the morning, okay? Gap fills, earnings, breakouts. We're going to get into some of the patterns that we really focus on in the morning that absolutely make me the trader who I am. 
because I am sticking consistently doing the same thing. I'm not allowing the macro market to affect me. Stocks in the afternoon, okay, are a different beast. It is thinner. It is less movement, less volume. These are all things that make me want to stay away from executing trades in the afternoon. I strictly, okay, am focusing on the morning trade. And then if I do decide to come in the afternoon and trade, I am disciplined with stops on, on my P&L and understand where my strengths are and we hit it and we trust ourselves in the morning and we're confident and we love trading early in the day. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go through a couple of these and the reasons why we and also gives me advantages of maybe lowering my risk, okay? As I talk about managing my risk, the overnight gap, I'm not allowing macro news in Ukraine, Russia, um, earnings to affect the way I come in. I'm coming in with a clean slate, a clear head every morning, looking to find those type of patterns that I really like. Okay, I want to make this job as simple as I can. There's only two things I could do. There's either I buy a stock or sell a stock. I don't want to make it too difficult. I'm trying to make this as easy as I can with less stress. I come in with a clear, clean slate and head, and I look to execute my strengths. Okay, there you go. Clean slate every day. It helps with my attitude. It helps with the way I trade, I'm consistently doing the same thing. I think it's a little more difficult when you are down in the morning. Okay, traders don't like to trade when they're down. They trade a little differently. It's a fact. Okay, maybe you get bigger size, maybe you do things you shouldn't and you tend to lose a little more. That's not what I'm looking at. I want that macro news. I want that gap down, that gap up. Okay, that's what helps me strive to find these gap fills and these executed uh, patterns that I really, really flow to. Yeah, I just want to say that the most important thing on this page, gang, is this one right here. No stress of overnight positions. I could care less when I go to bed at night what the market's going to do overnight and, you know, whether earnings came out on a stock that I'm looking at. The most important thing for me is to get a good night's sleep, to come in with a clear head the next day. And that's why, we, you know, we generally do not have overnight risk. I mean, once in, a, once in a while we do take overnights, you know, if it's an earnings stock or something like that, but 90% of the time we're flat every night. We come in with a clear head and we're coming in making a new game plan for the day ahead. So let's go on to the next reason. Cleaner moves around the open. Um, one of the things that we don't like to do is depend on overnights to make our day. So what that means basically, you know, greater volume and liquidity. That's when we trade the most trading. That's when you'll see if I trade 100,000 shares in a day, I bet you 80,000 were done in that first two hour window. There's a lot more volatility in ranges. Stocks generally have a, you know, like today I traded GWPH at a $5 range today. Um, Clovis, CLVS had a $5, $6 range today. These are things that we look at so we don't need to have that overnight risk or we don't have to worry about what we're going to do the next day because we have these stocks that we're going to look at. Um, and again, like I said earlier, the more human feel, there is more emotion involved in trading in the morning. Like I said, you keep away from the computers. You keep away from the low volume, low volatility trades of the afternoon. I, I go through charts every day and I bet you if you do the same thing, you'll see that 80% of the moves are done by lunchtime and then if you go through you're gonna see like a flat line or maybe a very very tight range in the afternoon so we wanna take we wanna take that risk away of trying to churn in between a, a, a tight move and come in and trade that volatile move in the morning and again when you're trading more during the active time of the day you can better money manage your, your P&L um, there's days that I'm up at my goal come noon and in the afternoon, you know, if it's a thinner trade, all of a sudden I, that 20 cent loss becomes a 50, 60, 70 cent loss that you didn't want to take. Why? Because you're trading 
with a disadvantage. You're trading with the robots, you're trading with the computers, you're trading where there's really no people trading anymore. It's a very thin tape, and you, you want to get away from that. Let me add something real quick, okay? The reason why I can trade the morning is because I'm not managing a lot of positions, okay? Someone asked me the other day, oh, do you feel like you're missing anything? I'm not missing a thing, okay, because I am literally flat, okay? I don't really care. The only thing I'm missing is enjoying time with my family and doing things that I love to do. I'm not someone who has 10, 12 positions that has to sit here throughout the day and try to manage it. I'm not a portfolio manager. I'm a, I'm a trader putting myself in the lowest, highest reward situation early in the day, in, in the day to control my loss limit and to look at an upside to where my strengths are. Let's go to number three real quick. Okay, reason number three. There Most it is. Important. Lifestyle. Okay, I am not allowing the stock market to, you know, rule my life. I see traders get very, very obsessed with, oh, are we going to rally in the afternoon? We're going to pull in. Oh, my God, I need to do this. I need to do that. You need to book your money, okay? I don't care who you are as a trader, and I want you to remember this, okay? Without booking profits, you're not going to be a trader for long. You have to trust the system. Money management is critical, okay? It's a more free time to spend with the family, ability to work a second job. These are all awesome. These are all things that I have trained myself to do because I'm not missing the market. But the most important thing is the booking the profits. You're not giving back profits that you worked your butt off. You made that great gap trade at 10.15 and you're up your goal. You don't need to sit here in the afternoon and try to make double because most of the time you're not going to. Okay, More balanced, lower stress lifestyle than swing trading. I'm not here managing positions. I don't need the market to do this. Okay, Steve said earlier, he brings up a good point Okay, with the overnight. I'm not depending on catching a big overnight trade, a big short, a big long. You know who I'm depending on? I'm depending on myself. Okay, I'm depending on myself to find those great patterns early in the day with low risk, and if I can't do it, then I need to fix something. But I am not going to allow the market to put myself in a hole every day. And let me just add to that, guys. Um, it's funny. I, I'm going to give you an example of what happens when I trade the afternoon. Uh, I traded uh, a couple months back. In fact, it was my wife's birthday. And we, uh, I was sitting here trading LinkedIn earnings and made a keyboard error. That's not a healthy, more balanced, lower stress lifestyle that I want. I mean, I, I did that. And I was so upset at myself, and it ruined her birthday. It ruined like the next week for me. I I, I couldn't get over it. But you know, it, it took me a little time, and and now I'm back to all right. I'm just going to work my hours. When I hit my goal, guess what? I'll take the foot off the gas. I will, uh, you know, give me a 20 percent uh, risk reward on the on any trades that I do the uh, rest of the day. So in other words, if I was up 500 bucks, I'm not risking more than 100. $150 on any trades the rest of the day. And and that's that's gotten me to where I am today with my consistency and uh, you know, like this says, just basically more time to spend with my family. Uh, you know, I, I do a nice run every day during the lunchtime or every other day, although Evan would think I didn't as he said earlier. <laughs> and uh, you know, also if, if if you're the kind of person that lives on the West Coast and you want to have uh, to do this in the morning. This is a great way for you to get up at 6.30 in the morning, work until 8.30, and then all of a sudden you go to your job at 9, 10 o'clock. That, that is one of the main reasons why this is a, a successful way that Mike and I have been very successful doing this in our careers. Now let's talk about uh, other keys to our successes here. You know, one of the things that we're very, very uh, strict on is our rules. And we follow them to a T. And I believe on the T3 Live site there is a uh, list of our top 10 trading rules, uh, authored by Mike Lee. And uh, you know you can ask if you can ask or send an email to customer service at t3live.com. They can direct you to where that is. But we are very very strict on our rules and discipline as well. 
Um, you know, it's very important to be a, a disciplined person. Like I said, when you hit your goal, do you have to try to um, make that money? Do you have to try and double it, or do you want to hit that goal, come back the next day, and hit it again? You know, I always say this to people all the time. I am more of a Pete Rose type trader than I am a Mark McGuire type trader, whereas I, I hit singles, doubles, and triples, and with the occasional home run, but I have very, very few strikeouts. And I think that's one of the keys to our success also is that our disciplines are second to none. And, and I'm very happy hitting a single and, uh, you know, taking five, six singles in a, in a day and maybe one strikeout rather than going and, uh, you know, hitting the, the home run with three or four strikeouts. I think that's just a uh, byproduct of what, what I've done over my career and Mike's career too, what he's done. But I, I think it's very important that you guys realize what kind of traders you are and then discipline yourselves to that uh, aspect. Um, stock selection. Mike made a good point today when we were on the air this afternoon. We are very, very good at finding stocks. And I think that's really, I mean, I put out a watch list every day on the site for our Trade the Morning Room. And we have different stocks in there every day. I mean, there's definitely the basket of stocks we look at all the time. But we always find those stocks that are that are moving for earnings or an upgrade or big levels. Like today we had VRNS and, uh, you know, like I said, CLVS. And it's just stocks like that and, and CSLT, stocks that you can find that are on huge levels that you can make some trades on. And I, I think, again, that's really important is to have a different basket when your stocks don't exactly work the way you expect them to. Apple, for the longest time, was in a $20 range. But, um, you know, now that it's trading again, I'm sure it's on everybody's radar. But I, I guarantee you there's people out there that struggled with Apple when it wasn't moving like everybody thought it would. The stock went from 720 to 4 something, and then it just was one of the hardest trades I'd ever seen. And it got to the point where people were counting on Apple for the way the market was going to go, and it didn't, it didn't exactly go that way for the longest time. Um, as Mike said earlier, uh, we have some strategies and patterns that we're going to go over in a little while, and I think that's really important too, gang. I think when you know charts and you're a chartist and, and a technician, as Evan calls himself, you know it's important to know what you're looking at and how you go about finding how to get into a trade. And that's, uh, you know, again, all part of why we're successful traders. And uh, I think Mike will probably add to this, but. Um, you know, our, our, our pattern recognition, there are two of them that we're going to show you that you guys are really, uh, you know, going to get some good information out of. Yeah, thanks, Steve. What you guys see up there, keys to success, okay? This isn't an overnight solution. This isn't a one-month solution. This takes time, okay? It will take you a year, okay, to really, really figure out who you want to be, who you are as a trader, and get this down. Okay? I love when people say, oh, you know what, I'll stop in for a week. It doesn't work. Okay? What works is dedicating yourself to your profession. Okay? I've been doing this for 14 years. This didn't happen overnight. I built my rules, and I built my discipline over time. But I always had that foundation of money management okay, and self-awareness, who I was, and who I wanted to be as a trader. I didn't care what the person behind me or the left of me was making or losing. Okay? They're not paying my bills. You're paying your bills. Trading, you know why I love trading so much? Because it literally is an individual business. I don't need to make phone calls. I don't need to write emails. I don't need to write letters. I don't need to have meetings. All I need to do is two things. Find a good stock in play and a good low risk situation throughout the day and trade that stock short or long okay I'm flexible when it comes to my trading and these are all things that any of you any of you listening to me here can become a better trader with a little more trust in your rules trust in your discipline and really trust in your levels you need that confidence to become a good trader you can't depend on luck or the market, or even trying to figure something out in two weeks or three months. This is a process. But we have had people in our room that have absolutely turned the corner that makes me feel good. 
Okay, I'm, I love trading and I also love teaching. And it makes me a better trader because I'm doing the right thing and I'm helping you to, for you to achieve your goals. It's really important, guys. All right, gang. So let's go over. We're going to go over two of our strategies. One of them is in the slides, uh, and the other one we're going to go over on my charts. But uh, I'm going to let Mike take this one. This is the five-minute high-low trade that we use pretty much religiously every morning. Okay, thanks, Steve. So a five-minute high and low trade. You're taking the first five-minute opening bar and finding the low and the high. Simplest way to explain how the five-minute high and low trade works. It doesn't have to happen in the first five minutes of the trade. It could happen 15, 20, 30 minutes into the day. But what I am doing as a trader is not just jumping in in the first minute, first two minutes. I do feel things out at that time. But when I get my opening range, and I'm going to show you an example of a stock today where it was CLVS. Steve, can you pull up CLVS for me, please? Certainly. As you can see, CLDS, before I get into the trade, why are we looking at CLVS? One, it had news. Two, it was gapped up. Three, it was doing very good volume intraday. And four, the daily looked great. A four-star play, I'm in it. I don't care if someone's, oh, Apple looks good and Baidu looks good and Google looks great and Amazon looks like crap. That's not how I don't care what other people are doing, guys. I'm focusing on CLVS. I have my opening range. As you can see, that opening five-minute bar, it takes a high out and this happened to happen. This trade happened to have, happened to happen, <laughs> can't even speak, <laughs> in the sixth, seventh minute of the day. Okay? I took the high and look at that trade. It never made a new high. So if I stuck around the afternoon and hoped and prayed it went up, okay, I would have been wrong. I happened to get back to this webinar at 410. I was home from 230 to 410, guys. I came back to teach you. I didn't want to be involved in the market. I booked my morning. I didn't want to get involved. And this CLVS trade on the five minute was extremely powerful, extremely fast, but the speed of a stock is only as fast as you make it. And when I talk about the speed of a stock, if you're focusing on a stock, it doesn't look that fast. If you're jumping around and listening to other people's ideas, you're going to miss something. Okay? To me, the most critical time for a trader is the first 20 minutes of the day. I talked about it this morning. If you don't have three stocks in your game plan by 925, you're not prepared. At 927, if you're still searching for stocks, you are doing your business, you know, a wrong... A disservice. Uh, a disservice. That's exactly right. <laughs> we are dedicated to our, our ideas. We are dedicated to our system. And the five-minute high-low trade made my day, and that was it. Now, I'm just going to go in here again, guys, just so you see this trade, okay? Here's your opening bar right here. So the high of that bar was 57.49. Okay, the stop on this trade would be basically 50% of this bar. So in this instance, it was about uh, was it dollar 40? So two dollars and 20, or not, I'm sorry, a dollar 20 range. So you're looking about a dollar 20 risk to make the width of this bar, which is about 250. And what does it do? It went from, like I said, 57.49 to 60.50 in. Uh, 10 minutes after the trade would have been executed. So again, I took some of this trade. Mike took some of this trade in here. But again, look what happened towards the end of the day. They're really The only other real trade might have been a short in this range here. And then we were pretty range bound for the rest of the day. So I just want you guys to let you, you know, to understand that when you do the five minute high or low trade, it is a pretty decent risk reward scenario that, uh, you know, puts you that you can put yourself into with small risk and almost double, you know, potentially doubling your money if not more. So that that is a very good uh, barometer for for a stock that's in play. Uh, let me just see. Hold on here, guys. All right, I'm just reading some questions here, but I'll get back to the presentation here now. I'm going to show you another chart that. Um, we are looking at, and this was this is just an old one, but this is an example of Tesla 
as you can see, here's your five minute high right here, a break of the you know rising eight period moving average here, right? You get in right there. Look where the stock goes. Okay. Never gave me a reason to get out. Bull flags in this area, and then gives you another 50 minutes of very, very um, big moves. I mean, look where it went. It went from uh, 137. If you were getting in down here, you could have sold it at 144. That stock, that chart was a long. When you, when you're looking at the um, five, when a stock breaks out of the high, gang. Let me clarify that. When a stock breaks the high, it's a five-minute high trade. Okay, so you're not looking to get short when it breaks out of the high. You're, get, you're getting long through that first five-minute bar to the upside. And on the same way, if you're looking at a short trade, okay, if the stock makes a five-minute low, you're getting in on the low for a short. You're not looking to buy that stock. Let me go back to my chart here. Okay, let me just pull that up. So here you go. I'm not looking to short a move when it breaks out here, okay? I'm looking at a long play, and uh, I'm looking for continuation. I got a two-bar continuation there, um, and that was basically my, you know, my morning in close. So I really didn't have any success trading it in the afternoon. Now, what we're going to show you, this one's not in the slide. We're going to show you the uh, H pattern, or what I like to call the Levache. I figure if we have the red dog reversal, we're going to have the Levache as well. So here we go. This is a stock that has a steep move down with a three to four, maybe five bar retracement into declining moving averages. And as you can see right here, we got that in GWPH today. We got a very large move off the open from 72 to 69.20. And then we got a five, six bar retracement up to about 70 half. And as you notice here, guys, look what it's doing. It's starting to maybe round off here. Looks like a lowercase h. I got short right around 60, right in this area, 69, 70, 69, 80, okay? And what I'm looking at is to get in here with a stop basically at the top of the h, which in this case would have been about 60 cents. So I'm risking 60 cents on this position, and look what it does. It rounds down, gives me that huge bar right here covered into this. I was risking 60 cents for a stock that fell about $1.40. So that's good to, you know, more than two to one risk, risk reward scenario. But again, very low risk. You've got to be able to recognize these patterns as you're trading. And that really isn't the, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have that expertise yet. So I, I highly suggest you guys, you know, take a look at some charts, understand the patterns, understand the way they work. But this H pattern is a very good example of uh, a mean low risk, high reward scenario. I'm going to add something real quick, okay? Patterns don't work a lot of times. That's a fact, okay? We are not perfect. No one is. If someone says they're perfect, they're lying to you. It's not going to happen as a trader. But what's great about how we trade is, okay, like that H pattern, we have defined outs. The key to our success is our pattern recognition but our discipline. I always say we have chart discipline. If a chart fails, we get out. We wait for another setup. If for some reason GWPH doesn't crack there and he gets short, he's going to get out. He's going to get out at 70 and a quarter. Worst case scenario, 70, 50, like he said. Okay, we're not trying to average up and average down. We're going to put ourselves in trades that we believe in and it's about six or seven good patterns. We gave you two that we really focus on, but there are others. Don't get me wrong. There are a ton, <laughs> especially today. I caught a couple good reversals in the 52-week and this and that, but that's you know, not, a, not really what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about and focus on is really you guys. It's not about Steve and I. It's about you guys achieving your goals, okay? doing, following, and thinking like how we trade, all right? I'm not telling you to get in GWPH short there. What I'm telling you is to figure out our madness, our method, because it works. We're consistent traders. Like Evan was saying earlier about Steve, who does look like he's 70 in that picture, has not lost in a long time. He's consistently taking money to the bank. Okay, I could probably count 
on my right hand how many losing months I've had in my career. It is something that we believe in. We are booking profits, taking them to the bank, booking each day, having our goals achieved, and not allowing the market to stress me out. If I would trade all day long, every day, I would not be talking to you right now, guys. <laughs> I, would be, I would be out of this business. I really believe that. But I am consistently booking, enjoying my life in the morning. It's about trade the morning for me. It's not about the market. I leave at 11.45 with no positions. I'm worried about the next day, not what happens at 2.30 and a failed breakout and a failed breakdown and the market's not moving and hearing everyone on the trading floor, what am I doing here? I'm only giving back my money. I could tell you a thousand times, a thousand times over the last few years I've heard, oh, I just gave back my whole day. What am I doing? What are you doing? Trade the morning. Get out of here. Very nice. Very nice. All right, guys, let's get back to the charts here. I got another example of the um, – let's go back to the five-minute low trade now since we just did a short in GWPH. Here's an example of, of a five-minute low. Again, here's your 930, the 935 bar. Set your opening range, right? As soon as you see the break onto the downside of this stock, you're going to enter it short – one cent through this area. So let's just say, for argument's sake, it was 65.50. I'm shorty, 65.49. If I can't get that, whatever I can get, maybe 60, 65.30. Whatever the case is, I'm going to get some short in this area. What this stock does then, you say to yourself, all right, I'm giving myself 50% of this bar, which is roughly right in here. Did we ever get to that area again? No. What happens next? You get a setup for a bear flag, okay, and then a big three-bar break right here. So again, these trades are very, very calculated based on what we see on the opening range. And again, there are times that the opening range isn't violated until midday, but that's, that's still a valid trade if it breaks the five-minute opening range at 12.30 in the afternoon. It doesn't really matter to us as long as you know, I'm seeing momentum with the trade. I want you guys to understand that the five-minute range doesn't mean it has to break at the, the second bar of the day. It just means that it set its opening range. When it breaks that opening range, that's when we get in and do our thing. Do you have anything to add to that, Mike? No, you said it perfectly. Let's okay. move on. I think that was, you know, I could talk all day, but... Take this example of an Amazon. Okay. As you can see, these are, you know, older charts, but as you... Amazon, okay, break of the five minute low. It had also a declining eight. And the trade ended up working. Okay, it was a very nice five minute low trade. The five minute low, guys, is just the opposite of the five minute high. I think you guys understand that now. Okay, the five minute high and low trade is the opening bar. The five minute high and low could happen at 9.50, it could happen at 10 o'clock, it could happen at 10.30. I can't bring up the chart, but a few days ago, ZU, we were looking at, I think that five-minute high and low was broken around 11 o'clock, and it ended up giving us a good trade. Those are just indication points. Those are my lines in the sand that I know if this stock is showing a bullish pattern breaks the five-minute high, a bearish pattern breaks the five-minute low, these are two stocks that I am going to trust and going to uh, get into. One other thing, Steve, mm -hmm. for me, and when I talk to traders, they have a plan, guys. They do the same thing every day. We keep it simple. Successful traders all think alike. They're not doing anything that you know, is out of the norm. What's normal to them is what's going to make you money. This is how Steve and I do it. I'm not teaching you to trade the closing. I'm not teaching you to trade pre-market or after hours. I am teaching you a skill that has worked for me for 14 years, okay, that is very consistent in every market. It's awesome. It's wonderful. It's a great way to live your life. Continue, Steve. Yeah, and I just want to say, guys, obviously, when Mike and I are on the radio and we're talking to our room, we, we say this a lot. We're not – we're here to teach you guys – how to see the market in a different way. We are really, you know, I can't say to you, 
that you're, you're going to make a ton of money trading with us, but you will definitely see a different way to make money and a, less, a much less stressful way to make money by doing what Mike and I do. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for 14 years, and this is the, the least stress I've had in my life um, only because I've made my work schedule, you know, work for me, and then I have time to do all those other things. I mean, how many of my friends work, you know, nine to eight every day, and they never get to see their kids? I get to take my kids to the bus in the morning. I get to pick them up if I want to in the afternoon, you know, when my wife's not home. I mean, she can do what she wants. If she has a business trip, it's okay, you know. I'm always around, and I have that flexibility to do that kind of thing because of the trading style that we employ. And I think that's really important um, to understand, Yang. So now we're going to go into the always fun Q&A session. And I will uh, I guess turn it over to Evan, or they're going to type them in. I'm not sure. But we're going to take some questions now, guys, and we will give you the answers. Q&A stands for questions and answers. <laughs> Fire away. We have a technical glitch. Before, you know, till the questions come out, guys, I'm going to read you two rules that I believe, and I'm going to give you two, okay? And this is the most important thing, except losses okay per prepare yourself mentally and emotionally for this it's going to happen if you can't handle the loss maybe you're getting too much size if you can't handle the loss maybe you're trading a stock too expensive these are all things that I will help you and get you to a point where you are not dealing with this and you're taking your loss and moving on as a trader okay do you trade right at the open or wait 15 30 or 60 minutes if a setup gives me that opportunity, I will trade the open. It has to be a trade that makes sense to me, a 52-week high, a 52-week low, um, you know, a double bottom, a reversal. When you talk about trading the open, I think five, ten minutes into the day is really trading the open. The first 30 seconds is no it's one knows it. Yeah. That's a gamble. I'm not teaching anyone the first 30 seconds or minute. I usually don't even call out some of my trades until the first five minutes when the opening five minute range is in because it's not really fair um, for you. And it's really not fair t to me either because I shouldn't really be taking offers in the first two minutes or hitting bids unless it is a guaranteed um, breakout or breakdown or, like I say, a support on the level two, but the level two has become less and less important. So that's why I think it's more and more important to focus on charts and your discipline. Yeah, let me, let me just add to that. One of the things that we do is we, we always say, guys, if I'm getting in before the first five-minute bar, we're putting in a feeler. We're just putting out maybe, you know, for me it's 100 shares just to feel out how the stock is going. No. And uh, I'm not putting in a full tier ever before the first five-minute bar is up. And I think that's really important for everybody to understand I am never full tier before a five minute bar prints because that is, that is a recipe for disaster right there. Um, this question here, what are your five minute targets, one, two, and three, or do you trim and trail? Um, I'll be honest with you, for me, as, a, as an active trader, I tend, I, I have a target in mind, like usually, like I said, the measured move should be the width of the opening bar, but I'll be honest with you, I trim and trail all the time. Um, if I buy a tier one of, like I did with that um, Clovis this morning, I'm probably out of 90% of it by the time it hits that target, by the time it gets to where I'm at, because our whole idea of trading is how to make money and, and, and keep it. So for me, if, if I was to say to you, I bought, I bought tier one here and the stock made a $2 move, but I took 40 cents out of it total, why? I mean, I mean, why would I do that? You know what I mean? So I'm trimming and trailing as the stock's going. So I might sell some, 
for a 50 cent profit, some for a dollar profit, some for a dollar 25, et cetera, et cetera. Um, All right, I Steve, don't. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. That All right. Good. I'm sorry to cut you off. I want I, you, I just wanted to uh, to jump in because the, the the questions are literally coming in you know, 15 per second here. So I don't think we're going to get to all the, I mean, I can't even follow them are coming in so fast. Um, really good stuff. And I think a lot of it, uh, especially the, the real time stuff always is, is very impactful. Um, I'm going to pick out a couple that I tried to identify here uh, that I thought were, you know, really appropriate for what you guys do. Um, question one here is, do you guys trade right at the open or do you wait 15, 30, 60 minutes uh, we, we we answered that one. Oh, you did that one. Okay. Yeah, we just Sorry did that, that one. Um, now, do you show all your trades in the VTF? A hundred percent. You guys will know every position that I'm in, and I will tell you long or short. Um, I'm sorry, the the price that I'm in and the levels that I'm looking at and my out. Um, someone asked earlier about trimming and trailing. T and T, baby, always take off profit. <laughs> okay. T I'm always. I'm always taking off profits. If I think a stock's going from 50 to 51, you better believe I'm selling half at 50-50 and a little more at 50-75. And maybe you'll even a little bit of 50-30. Yeah. All right, there's a, there's a couple questions in here, guys, about how you find your trades each day. And I, I, I've, I tried to get to a few of the answers as I was answering some of these questions about, <laughs> one, using your daily trade setups. Uh, you know, a lot of them featured in Off the Charts. And then other, you know, the other method, uh, you know, possibly uh, the way you, you scan for stocks that are doing, you know, above average volume at the open. Um, so maybe you can elaborate on those two points or how you generally, you know, find the stocks that you want to trade. All right, I'll take that one. My day, every day, I, I write down at the end of the day what I traded. If, if I made money in it, I'll, I'll write it down. If I didn't really make money in it, I won't write it down. But um, it's a good stock. I'll write what I do is I write the highs and the lows from the day that it happened. So what happens is the next day I know that let's just say again GWPH today's low was 6803. Well tomorrow if it's weak I know that I have an entry at si below 6803 for a short. So right there I have a partial game plan. What I do when I come in in the morning I'll look at the news to see what had earnings, what got upgraded, what got downgraded. What uh, you know? What, what Evan said. Go through filters and find stocks that have daily bull flags, uh, daily bear flags, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'll write them down, and I make an A list, a B list, and a C list. And what I do is when I do uh, my watch list in the morning for the room, I narrow it down to the best opportunity trades that I have uh, that I have set up from that list. So in other words. Today I came in with GWPH, Clovis, which had uh, good drug news, VIPS, which had earnings, ICPT, which was strong yesterday and had a good level breakout, and then I had uh, a couple of other stocks that were setting up for, like I said, bullish or bearish action. But overall, I really made, only traded uh, four or five stocks because they were the best opportunity for me based on the list that I had. They were the best opportunity for me to make money. One like, thing. All right, so let me let me let oh. me ask this question. Here's another one, um, and I, I got to apologize because there's no way we're getting through all these questions. There's got to be 150 <laughs> questions here. I'll um, stay here at 11:30. <laughs> can can Mike? Uh, you could take this one. Can new traders, without 14 years of experience in the market, uh, you know, start with this type of trading style? And if so, what you know, what do you recommend to somebody that that is on the novice end? Okay. One, a hundred percent yes. Um, you have to understand it is going to take time. It will take time for someone who has 14 years experience who's never traded like this. The one thing that I always like telling new traders is the capital. You don't really need that much capital to trade like this style. You're not taking overnights. Um, you're not holding many positions. You're really getting in a good position and selling it if you're right and really getting out when you're wrong. So for a new trader, 100% you can make this happen. We have new traders. I've taught new traders to be extremely successful in this style, in this way. Um, new traders happen to like it because, it, one, without the discipline early in your career, you make trading that much more difficult. So don't ever forget that. You're teaching yourself discipline early in your career. 
to find a few patterns that you really love, the money management, accepting losses, keeping it simple, all these things will help you in the long run. So to answer it, 100 to 10%, you should come on board. Um, we could help you tremendously. Steve, can you talk a little bit about, there's a couple questions I've seen here about um, how you get out of trades, scaling out, do you, do, you, do you scale out of a trade over a course of, you know, a few exits or do you sell everything at once? Tell, talk a little bit about, you know, when you're, uh, specifically when you're in a winning trade and you have profit, okay. are you scaling out or are you selling all one? All right, here, I'm going to bring up my uh, Clovis trade this morning, guys. So here's the Clovis five-minute high-low trade. Let's just say, uh, I'm just going to throw out a number. I bought 500 shares right through the high. The first thing I'm doing is, is putting out an offer maybe 40 or 50 cents higher for 100 shares just to see if it gets taken, okay? And if it gets taken, I'm going to scale out. I'm going to put out a, an offer maybe another 50 cents higher. I'm just going to watch the stock, watch the chart, and try to you know sell as the stock's moving in my favor. I, like I said before, it's really important. You have to trim and trail. You have to scale out. I, ve I very rarely will buy, say, a thousand shares of something and sell a thousand shares right at, at, at the same price. I like to, you know, piece my stuff out so I can hopefully maximize my gains. Even if I'm not in a full tier, I can maximize the trade by taking out what I expected of the trade while booking money uh, on the way up. The one thing I hate is when a stock uh, goes in my favor and I didn't take anything off because I got, you know, bullheaded or pigheaded, and the next thing I know, I'm taking a loss in the trade. And I'll give you an example. Uh, last week, I was watching I ICPT, and I had a great short, and I was in the money uh, five or six points, and I, I expected the stock to break. I think it was 235, and I was looking for like a 20-point trade, and I had, and I had a, a nice trade that I had taken on, and I let it go against me. Why? Because I got greedy. I went from saying, all right, I'm going to make five or six points here, to making to losing three or four points because I expected something to happen, but I did not take anything off uh, on the way down, and that to me was was one of the most maddening things I've done in a while. And you know that's why I, I think it's really imperative, gang, that you always trail trim and trail your trades and take profits as they're in your favor because the last thing you want to do is turn that profit into a loss. All right, so let's keep going here. Um, man, I can't even follow this. So This is crazy. The questions are just coming in like wildfire. It's hard to follow. Um, so let's talk about uh, personality traits. Interesting question here. What type of personality traits do you think are necessary to achieve success using uh, a, a short-term approach like yours? Okay, the personality, one, you got to be very... Listen, when you guys hear me on the radio, we are real traders. We are, you know, making money and trading like you guys are. It's our business. So you do see the real side of us. Our personalities are, you know, up and down at sometimes. If I'm losing in the trade, you see it. But in a whole, you need to come in with a really level head. I think the one thing as bad as a trade gets okay as a bad as I'm having it I have the discipline to get out I know I could come back tomorrow even if I'm hitting the bid at the low of the day and I'm hurting financially on that trade and I don't want to lose anymore I have to get out because I could fight another day um, that's the personality for me um, I think you just need to be in control of yourself you can't be cocky you have to be confident but also someone who really is just a machine when it comes to rules and I did a webinar in Florida here real quick um, a live you know seminar and I asked everyone the same question when everyone walks in I said why are you here and everyone tells me we want to make more money I go well guess what instead of worrying about making all that money you want to make worry about not losing saving yourself money, getting out when you're wrong. This year I've had a couple really bad days and if I didn't have those bad days and just stopped losing a little bit, I'd have that much more in my pocket. So to me, 
the most important thing about our style of trading is controlling your losses and you will become a better trader that quickly. Let me, let me right. just add to that, Ed, before you, you go. I want to just say one more thing. The other thing, gang, that you have, the personality trait you have to have, you have to love this. You have to love what you do. Um, I tell this to everybody all the time. You have to wake up every day with a good attitude. Um, when, I, when I take a day off, I always feel like I'm missing money in the market. Whereas some people take a day off because they just can't, they just can't handle the mental uh, aspect of trading right now. They need to take a break. Whereas I'm always like, if I take a day off, I'm missing X amount of dollars out of my paycheck every week. So it's just that mentality that I think people need to have, where, where they have to love this so much that they want to make this happen. All right. So tell me about what a day is like. What is? What do you get in the mentoring? Okay. Uh, you I'll, want to take that, Mike? Or you want me to take it? I could take it. Go I ahead. Could, I've been doing this for two years. I think I know my schedule. <laughs> we are on air, guys, Monday through Friday. We are here from 8.45 to 11.30 every day. You're getting game planning. You're getting live trades. You're getting evaluations of your game plan. That's the most important thing. And our opinion on your ideas, also psychological help as well. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are here from 1 to 2.30. I like to call it a trading lab. I also like to call it you know, a time for you guys to you know, really ask questions. Um, get, I want to get to know you as a trader, and I, you surely will get to know, you know about me very quickly. It's an open forum. It is a great room. Um, we have awesome traders, awesome people, and Steve and I just love trading, and we also love to teach. And the other thing you get is a watch list every morning, Monday through Thursday, and videos, you know, a recap video of what we did during the day, Monday through Thursday. Okay, um, good stuff here. Looking for... <laughs> How did you learn your strategies? Did you learn them through experience, or did someone teach them to you? That's a great question. I'll, I'll be honest with you. For me, it was all about experience. Um, when I learned how to trade, I think the important thing for me when I first started trading was how am I going to make this a consistent paycheck? And it, it's, it started you know, very, very early in my career where I had to figure out a way to do that. So I started, you know, coming in making a hundred dollars, making a hundred dollars, losing, you know, fifty when I was down or when I had a bad day. But basically, what I did was scaled up as I was starting to make more money, and I've, you know, I've attained a goal that I am consistent with. But it was something that I had to, you know, work really hard at in the first, you know, at, well, actually every day. But in the first couple of you know, I'd say months, maybe even a year of trading. It was a lot of trial and error, trying to figure out what I what I had to do to make that money. And I think the first time I ever really made money was when I bought uh, 300 shares of Sun W at the time. It was like $123 stock, and I made a point and a half on it. And I think I was the happiest guy ever in the room. And the guy next to me yelled at me for selling it because it was probably going like eight dollars higher, and I didn't care. It was just my best trade that I had ever done when I started. I'm like, you know what? I don't care where it goes. I just made $450. I am out the door. And from that day on, I, I really realized that it was more important for me to just make money and hit a goal. So that at the end of the month, guess what? I'm paying my bills. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm living. I wouldn't say I'm, nobody lives a stress-free life, but a very low-stress life. And you know, it was definitely something you have to learn, and it's a process. You can't just pick it up in a day. It's something that's going to take a long time uh, for you. I mean, depending on your personality, it's going to take a while. It's not something you're going to just pick up and take. And in a month from now, you're going to be on your way. You got to definitely give it patience and a little bit of time. All right. So a few more questions here. We're we're almost to the end of the time period. Um, question again about screening for stocks. I've seen a couple questions here. You know, how are you screening for stocks at 9:25 a.m.? So the five minutes before the bell, what are you guys really doing? Okay, so by 9:25 you should have your game plan. Like I said that before. Okay, 
When I get in every morning, I first look at news, I look at my gap ups, gap downs, volume, what's going on with these stocks, okay? Earnings, whatever it is. I look at volume and that kind of stuff. Then I go to the charts. I say, why is X, you know, Y, Z up? I look at head earnings. Oh, wow. You know what? It's at a two-day high. It's, it's near the 52-week high, and that's how I start the game plan. One thing that I benefit most from our room, okay, I benefit from things as well, is the morning game planning. The stock picks that our partners in the room have or our, you know, you know, people in our chat are great. I don't follow everything. It's impossible for a trader to follow everything. But we're doing this at 8.45, at 9 o'clock. At 9.25, you better have your plan. And I always say, every day in the room, this is time to calm yourself down. Get focused. Relax. Stop joking. Stop looking you know, to get in a pre-market trade. These are all things that could be stressful to your look. I'll give Steve, yes, a couple of days ago, Steve missed ZU. I made a really good trade in it. And he was like in other stuff, and he was dealing with something, and he was a little flustered. And I always tell traders, okay, 925, just calm yourself down, relax. Get those three stocks that you're looking at. Put alerts out at levels that you really, really trust and really look good on the chart, and you're going to do just fine. Okay, last question here, and then uh, so this will be the last one. So the question is, what's the difference between your course and your mentoring? That's a good question. I think the, the course is a little what, – what you're getting out of the mentoring gang is live trading, and you're getting, you're getting walked through trades, whereas the course – I mean, anybody can read a textbook, and anybody can uh, you know, say, oh, yeah, I, I know how to do this, and I know how to do that. But if, if you're not getting walked through the process and you're not getting talked through a trade, it, it's, it's a, a completely different world. Um, in the mentoring room, you're getting, like I said, you're getting us talking all day, or not all day, all morning long. You're getting a, a video. You're getting a watch list. You're getting a game plan prepared for you, um, you know, in the morning. And again, you have your own ideas too, but you're getting a game plan that, that the quote-unquote pros are watching, and that's that to me is in and of itself you know, worth be, having a mentorship just for that reason. And let me just add something real quick, guys. The course is 24-7, online, anywhere you go, anywhere on T3 Live. Okay? The course is amazing. If I was a trader and I was starting out, I would have paid for this before I even started trading. Okay, we are mentoring throughout the day, giving you live, live trading. Live trading action. Right? That's the beauty about the mentoring. The course and the mentoring, the combination is what makes it happen. It's very hard to mentor someone if they don't really know exactly what the course is, what we're teaching. Okay, so the combination of the two is really, to me, extremely important and we spent hours and hours doing the videos and because we have a passion for what we do okay I love to teach I, I it helped me out as a trader it still helps me and I am going to do the right thing because I don't want to look like that fool like oh my god why is he picking a top this stocks ripping what's the point why is he doing that and I try not to because I don't want you guys to do it as well so you need the knowledge to apply the knowledge. So the course is the knowledge, and then you guys take the information and you help the students then apply it and, and, and put it into play. And it's two very different things. So um, that is a very good segue into uh, our very special offer for those that attended today. Uh, and as you can see, typically uh, Mike and Steve, <clears throat> again, their expertise is invaluable. Um, but for, for today, we are going to have two options for you guys uh, who attended. Uh, one is six months um, of access to their mentoring program that comes with the course. Uh, and you can see the retail value of both and the, and the offer that we're giving and you know, how valuable it really is. So it's six months, and that includes both, again, the mentoring every day as well as the course uh, for $2,000. And the second offer, which I think is a ridiculous offer, is a year uh, of their mentoring uh, and a year of access to the course and the well as a free iPad mini just a little giveaway 
um, for $2,600. So again, the difference between the two is, is enhanced on the second one because you're getting 12 months of access to Mike and Steve. And I will tell you as an educator and as a former trader that mentoring is valuable with time. Um, you can't have, and, I, and I'm throw it back to Mike and Steve on this one, would you agree that you're not going to get the result out of mentoring in a week or a month or even six weeks, the same result you'd get in six months or eight months or even a year uh, because these things do take time to build and, and it doesn't just happen overnight. Um, okay, so the links are in there now. Uh, in the chat box, you'll be able to click on the links for the offer. It's a six-month offer and a one-year offer. Uh, and you also will be getting an email tomorrow with the recording of all you saw today and, uh, and the offer as well. For those that attended, you can replay the uh, webinar again if you found it to be enlightening and entertaining and enriching. Do yourself a favor and um, play it again. Um, but this is the offer that we're special to you guys for attending this event. Again, the first offer for six months at 2000 and the second offer for the annual subscription, which I happen to think is the best opportunity, uh, as well as the free iPad mini for $2,600. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everybody for attending. We appreciate it. Make sure you check back to T3 Live for future uh, upcoming webinars. I'm doing one next Tuesday, uh, and you can find information on how to register at t3live.com. And again, for any questions, you can email us at sales at t3live.com or you can call us at 888-998-3548. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a nice evening.